F4, GB3, FIA, F3, Formula 2, it's all here under one roof at Carlin Racing in Farnham in Surrey. This is one of the most successful British racing teams outside Formula 1 and they've been kind enough to invite us to have a look around their HQ and specifically at their two Formula 2 cars which will be campaigned for Liam Lawson and Logan Sargent in the 2022 Formula 2 Championship. It's a massive opportunity for us to take a look at a top level race team in action. So let's figure out what makes this place tick and have a look around. I've managed to snare Ben Huntingford, who's the Formula 2 team manager. He's gonna give us a whistle stop tour of their incredible facility here in Farnham in Surrey and show us how you put these cars together. Talk me through this area. This is the bay. This is where we keep the two cars most of the time. Every time they come back from a race, they come into here, they get stripped down. Most of the work on the cars happens in here and then the various components go off to other areas in the factory that we can go and have a look at. But this is the main place where the guys work and where all the action happens. So how much time do the cars actually spend here through the, through the season? It depends on the season and how the races are laid out. Obviously, if we have double headers or triple headers, back-to-back -back races um, or long-haul flyaways, we do a lot of the work at the circuits. Um, but any time they're back in the UK, this is where they are. OK, so different bits of the car are built in different areas of the factory. Do you want to take us through yeah, to sure. some of the other specific areas? Yeah. This is our pit stop boom. This is where we practice our pit stops in between the races. Uh, the cars come down here and all the guys can practice and we have the full setup just like we would at the circuit in the pit lane. Um, and the guys are practicing the pit stop every other day while they're at the factory. Wow. So how many pit stops would they do in, let's say, one practice? <laughs> 10, 20, 30? Well, we, we, we keep the number down because um, it's a pretty tiring process. So we normally do them in small batches of five stops at a time and we'll do that two or three times on a practice day. So when you see those pit stops nailed next year in the pit lane by Carlin, they're out two seconds ahead of everybody else. <laughs> Here we have it, this is the process, here's why. So take me through what's, what's going on here. So this is our surface table. This is essentially a completely flat surface. Uh, we put the cars on here, we can measure things, uh, anything we like from bodywork to the chassis or anything that you know, we want to measure. And so the purpose of that is because you're running spec racing cars. So everything has to be to extremely fine margins to yeah. get it absolutely right. Yeah, so and we use this um, completely flat surface to validate our equipment that we take with us to the circuits so that we know when we get there, what we're measuring is, you know, what we're actually seeing. Awesome, what's next? So I smell, I smell gearbox oil. Yeah, this is our sub-assembly room. So in here we rebuild all our gearboxes, bell housings, uprights, wheel bearings, steering racks, any component of the car. How many gearboxes per car will you have through the year? Is it just one each or how much spare stuff do you have to carry around? Um, ordinarily just the one gearbox for the year, um, but a lot of the components inside the gearbox get changed over on a regular basis. Um, and then we can also carry a complete spare gearbox uh, for either car should they need it in the event of an accident. And you have to service those how often? Every time the car runs or between race weekends? Yeah, every time the car goes on circuit, when it comes back in the garage, the guys completely strip the gearbox, take all the ratios out, change the oil, check the filters. Of course, very important for safety, isn't it? Because the gearbox elements are, are load bearing yeah. in many ways yeah. with the suspension fitting on uh, to the back of it. So actually, it's not only changing gear in the car, but it's an integral part to how yeah. the car handles yeah, each, and feels. Each component from the chassis backwards is actually part of the structure of the car. Yeah, and so obviously needing a lot of attention and, and a lot of interest and, and a whole room just for themselves. Obviously machine shop for fabrication, but what is it that you actually need to make? For Formula 2 cars because surely all the bits are spec. Yeah so all the parts of the car are spec um, but here we manufacture all our own pit equipment so there's a lot of stuff that goes with a Formula 2 car. Jacks, fuel rigs, setup patches and all the equipment for setting the car up, stuff for traveling around the world with starter motors, battery packs, there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes with it 
and we make all that in-house here. So you're allowed to make all of that stuff bespoke and is there time in making that pit equipment? Um, so the performance comes indirectly in that if we're there and all our kit works and it's working properly, it doesn't hold us up, it doesn't slow us down and we can do the job we need to do on the cars. So do you have people working flat out in here or is it more a kind of ad hoc or we need to make one of these? Yeah, I mean, during the off season, a lot of stuff goes on, a lot of stuff gets made in here. And then throughout the season, it's normally just repairs of bits and bobs, um, keeping everything running. Can't really take us in there. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Not allowed in there. <laughs> Composites department, so what you mean by... Yeah, anything that's made of carbon fibre, fibreglass, anything like that, um, we do down here. So in Formula 2, that tends to be bits of pit equipment and minor repairs to some of the car parts which we're permitted to do. Okay, and what I think I see behind you is an autoclave. It is. Yeah, so this is uh, autoclave, so parts can go in there. It produces pressure on the, on the component, temperature and a vacuum as well to bond all the carbon together. So the process is things will be fabricated and then made in here, formed and, yeah. and resined? Yeah. yeah, so all the sheets we see hanging up on the wall there, that's the carbon fibre in its sheet form. That gets laid into a mould. The moulds get bagged up in the next room, which is here. And then they come out of there once they've all been bagged up into the autoclave overnight and then the next morning they're ready for trimming and going onto a car. And the autoclave essentially is a massive oven purely cooking under pressure those yeah. carbon fibre elements, getting them ready, getting them nice and hard and strong and ready to go either back on the car or back yeah, onto the pit equipment yeah. or, or, or as spares. One team, two simulators. Talk me through these. Are, are they different in specification and what will, what will you use the two sims for? Okay, so this is where um, the drivers will come before every race weekend. They spend some time in here, normally a couple of days or longer, with their engineers um, running on the various circuits. Uh, we've got the bigger sim in here with the projectors. And then we've got a second simulator in there, which we use uh, for a lot of development um, of the main simulator. And also when we've got two drivers in, they can race each other and various things like that. They like that, in my experience. Yeah. So over the season, a lot of hours on the simulator per driver, or is it something that's very yeah, much at the start of the year? A lot year? of the drivers have got simulators at home as well that they're using, and then they come into the factory, um, you know, a couple of days before each race. So it could be 30 days a year here on the simulators. And do you use the simulators for, for, for engineering development as well, or is it purely a, a driver tool? Um, a little bit of both, but mostly a, a driver training tool. Okay. So the the... The brutalisation room, this would yeah. appear to be. So this is our little gym. This is where the guys that do the pit stops come twice a week. Wow. Uh, they get time to work out in here. They have a trainer come in. They do some training. They come in here, work out, working on the, the core muscles that you need to lift those 18 inch wheels because they're considerably heavier than the 13s we were used to. So when that changed over in the pit stops, uh, we found that the guys to you know, stop them getting injured and increase their performance. They needed to spend some time in here. And so there's material benefit. Obviously, you, you aim to sort of defend them from, a, from an injury standpoint as well, especially with the personnel limit that you have. Yeah, you can't yeah. just bring more people exactly. in. Uh, but also, they're faster, presumably, if, if they can move the wheels quicker. Yeah, yeah everything they can do in here um, to make them physically stronger helps them move the wheels faster around the car makes the pit stop faster. Yeah, one of the few elements, the areas where you can really make a massive difference as a yeah. team and where teams really make errors as well. So yeah. I can see yeah, why you do can that. Go both ways there. Full sticker room. Talk me through this. So you livery all of your own cars? Yeah, so any of the cars that aren't painted um, or any extra graphics that go on the cars, we make in-house here. We work with the drivers or their sponsors to get the livery for the car. We then take that copy it onto the car, produce the stickers in here. And is it a sticker as anyone would be able to buy or, or do you use something a little lighter, a little thinner? A um, little bit of a mixture. Um, a lot of the stuff is only going to stay on the car for a short period, you know, for up to a year or something like that. So we tend to use stickers that can be moved around or come off without damaging the paintwork underneath if we need to. Yeah, so once the cars come back from the circuit, they go in the bay. All the bodywork and wings and aero parts and floors, they come off the cars 
and they go into these storage areas to keep everything safe while it's off the car. So old seats, old, well, no, current seats, yeah, you would imagine. Yeah, this is all the current stuff that's off various cars from championships in our workshop. And they hang up. And why do you hang them up above the floor? Just because it's the best way to store them? Yeah, or it just stops to them keep getting... things off the floor, keep them protected. Um, and it gives us space to store a lot of stuff. We've got a lot of cars running out this workshop. Um, so to keep everything separate and in its right place and protected, this is where we keep it. Yeah, it's uh, quite an incredible group of parts, actually. I bet it's busy here in, uh, in <laughs> yeah. the off season yeah. when you've got things moving yeah, around. Yeah, so behind the scenes here is where all the, you know, all the parts are kept and uh, where a lot of the action happens. So I think we might have covered the facility as it pertains to Formula 2, unless there's anything else you want to... No, I don't think so. Well, we've covered everything. Thanks very much for no the problem. tour. Thanks very much for having us in today. It's been a great pleasure right. uh, to get a feel for what's going on here and best of luck with the season. I'll be watching you from the commentary box. Okay. Thank you.